Hey guys, it's Luke Yon, and today I am going to be filming my October and November wrap-up. So, I was originally going to film these two videos separately, like have my October wrap-up, but halfway through November I realized that I didn't even read that many books in October, and I don't think I would have read like a ton in November, so total I read eight books in October, and I read ten books in November, so that's only 18 books. I can easily do that in one video, and I thought it'd probably be just a little bit more interesting if I combined them, as opposed to filming two separate videos and posting them, uh, separately. So, yeah, um, let's just get into the video. So, obviously, starting with the books that I read in October, the first book that I read was actually a reread, and that was The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. This is the fourth book in the Truly Devious or Stevie Bell series. This is a standalone book, so whereas the first three books were all part of like the same mystery, this one kind of deviates from that. It's its own standalone mystery, and this book obviously follows Stevie Bell. It takes place after the events of the Truly Devious series, though you can read this one without the knowledge from those other three books, but I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend doing that. But regardless, this book takes place in the summer after that school year where Stevie Bell figured out the mystery, and she is invited to go to this camp by the owner, and this camp is very famous because in the 70s there was a murder there, and it has still been unsolved, and so Stevie enlists um, her friends to go to the camp to become camp counselors there so she can hopefully figure out um, the mystery and uncover what's happened. Um, but at the same time, a new murder has taken place, so she's trying to figure out you know, can the murderer be the same person? What can, like, what is really happening in this small town? I really enjoyed this book. I read it for the first time last year when it came out, um, in June, and I decided to pick it up again because I felt like it would be a fun, spooky read, and this is the only truly devious book that I've only read once, um, because I like to read the original three, like, kind of by themselves, and I didn't really feel like reading this when I reread those books, and this, I just didn't really pick it up like in June or during the summertime or whatever, so I picked it up in October because I thought it'd be a little bit spooky, and I did still really enjoy it. I kept it at a four-star rating. I don't love it as much as the original series, but I still think it's really fun. I think it's a really well-crafted mystery, um, even though I said this in my review, like, you would definitely have to be, like, the next Agatha Christie to figure out the, like, mystery, just because there's something big revealed at the very end that kind of makes you figure it out, but you probably would never have been able to, like, un like to solve the mystery without that crucial piece. So that's kind of why I do think that the mystery was really interesting and well-constructed, except for that last little piece, but I still obviously really love the characters. I love Maureen Johnson's books, and I'm really happy that I reread it. The next two books that I read were actually part of the same series, but the first one was Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the first book in her like, I guess it just finished her series, um, and this book follows a main character named Amelia who runs a restaurant with her family, and one day she ends up finding her twin sister dead, and she believes it could be some paranormal stuff that caused it. So I enjoyed this book. I kind of, it was kind of like the dark YA version of Twitches in my opinion, and if you don't know what Twitch Twitches is, you clearly did not have a childhood because it's one of the best Disney movies of all time, but this book kind of reminded me of it just like in a weird way, but I did enjoy this book. I kind of read it more as like a fun romp as opposed to like a serious read. Um, I did think that Amelia was a little bit flat, um, and I do think that the characters were a little bit flat overall in this book, but I didn't really like the plot. It was really, really addicting and really fast to read, and I think that the writing was really nice, and I enjoyed the setting of Sicily, and I think it was a good book overall. I ended up giving it like about a 3, 3.5 out of 5 stars, and I would definitely recommend it. But the next book that I read was Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco, which is the sequel and the second book in the series, and this one blew the first book out of the water. I ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that everything was just so much better. I loved the setting of this book, because this book takes place in the underworld, um, but it actually, like, subverts that, where instead of being, like, a fiery pit, it's actually, like, a wintry, iced-over land thing, and I thought that was a really interesting thing, and I really loved the winter vibes. And I thought that all the characters were a lot more 
well-rounded in this book. Like, I feel like they were definitely pretty watered down in the first installment, but I feel like here they were just a lot more interesting, and I think that they all really came to their own, especially Amelia, since this book is definitely more character-driven, and while I still enjoyed the plot and found myself reading this book really quickly, um, I don't think it was as... Uh, like plot driven as the first book so we definitely learned a lot more about Amelia and I thought the writing was a lot better in this book the setting was really interesting and I just thought it was overall a really really great book and I'm super excited to read the third and final book in the series. Continuing on with like the murder mystery theme of this month the next three books were also all part of the same series the first one being The Last of August by Brittany Cavallaro this is the second book in the Charlotte Holmes series I read the first book, A Study in Charlotte, last year, um, and I enjoyed it, and I already owned the second and third book, and so I decided that I would just read it, and this series follows the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson, but in this story we have Jamie Watson and Charlotte Holmes, and so it's kind of, um, like, switched, where Jamie, at least in the first and second book, is the narrator, and Charlotte is, like, the secondary character. But she is a main character as well, but she just doesn't narrate the books um, until we get to the third book. But um, this one follows, it's not necessarily a murder mystery, this one deals with kind of an underground paint, painting sort of ring. So it kind of deals with art forgery, and we go all throughout Europe, I think, we definitely start in England, and then we move to Germany, and we go all over the place, and I thought that was really interesting, and I did like the developments of the characters, but I didn't love this book. I ended up giving it about a three out of five stars. I thought it was interesting. I do still feel like, even now, that even after finishing the series, that the writing is a little bit, like, it definitely keeps you removed from the story, just the way that it's written, so it's not my favorite. Um, but I did like the book. I thought the plot was interesting, even though the book was a little bit slow. Um, and I did like the characters overall. I think they are probably the shining stars of the series, just because they're really, really well developed. They have really well thought out and, um, developed backstories, so I thought that was really, really interesting. Then after that, I moved on to the third book, The Case of for Jamie. I almost said of Jamie. But this is definitely my favorite book in the series. This is the only one that I gave four out of five stars, and I really, really liked this book. So this book, finally we get introduced to Charlotte's perspective. We had like two or three chapters at the end of the last of August from her POV, but this book is like actually split evenly between the two of them, and I think that what is what made this book one of my favorite, or my favorite in the series, because I think they balance each other really well, and I feel like their dual perspective is what I wanted from, like, the entire series. So I think that's why I enjoyed this book the most. And I... this one is definitely more character-driven. There is, like, a mystery, but again, it's also not a murder mystery. So I think books two and three are interesting because they don't deal with actual, like, what you would think of as a typical mystery, which is someone dies and the characters have to solve it. This one and the second one are more... like, they are still mysteries, but they're a little bit more unconventional. Um, and unique, so I thought that's interesting, and I don't know, I feel like this book was just a lot better, even though not a ton happens in this book, I still really liked reading about the characters, and they're actually not together for a lot of this book, so I think it was interesting to see them grow on their own, uh, and learning about both of them, so yeah, and I think that the, you know, ultimate, like, trajectory of the story, even though it wasn't super fast-paced, was really interesting as well. So definitely my favorite of the series, um, and I really, really liked it. And then I did, of course, move on to the fourth book, A Question of Holmes, and this one I also gave three out of five stars. So this book actually takes place solely from Charlotte's perspective. So this one takes place after the end of the third book, obviously, and both of them, it's kind of like, it almost felt like a spinoff to me because they graduated from school, and they're in England in this book, so that was interesting, and this one does go back to the traditional mystery, like murder mystery. So obviously someone dies in this book, and they have to figure it out, and I didn't think that the mystery was like all that interesting, but again, I did really like the characters. I thought the writing was good. It was like a really fun read. I think um, the other books in the series are a little bit more serious, but this one was definitely more light and fun, and just like a cute mystery romp, and I really enjoyed that. So yeah, I did give this one 3 out of 5 stars, and overall I would recommend the series. 
Um, it's not one of my favorites, but I do think it obviously does appeal to a lot of other people, and I did really I, I did really like it overall. The next book that I have is a book that I actually read for school, and that was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I gave this book four out of five stars. I really loved this book. I think that um, it was just really, really beautiful. I never would have picked it up on my own just because I don't really read classics that often, um, but I'm in AP English Literature this year, and we have to read this book, and I was originally a little bit apprehensive, but I'm really happy I read it overall. Um, I'm not even going to try to explain what happens in this book, just because I didn't know anything that happened when I went into it, and I also just think it's, like, no explanation I could give would do it justice. So, um, yeah, I really loved this book. I think that the characters in particular were the best parts of this book, just because they're so well developed, and the writing is so beautiful. There's so many layers to the story. Like, every time we had a class discussion, we were connecting things back to, like, the very first line of the book, and it was just really interesting how everything intersected. It was definitely hard to read at points just because of the subject matter, and there's a lot of trigger warnings in this book. Um, there's trigger warnings for, like, rape and incest and, um, you know, obviously racism and sexism and all that, so um, definitely look into that before you read this book, but um, it is easily like my favorite or one of my favorite school books, um, and I would absolutely recommend picking it up. And then the last book that I read in October was another reread. I reread this book like every October, and that is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and illustrated by Faith Aaron Hicks. Um, this is just a graphic novel that follows two main characters, and it follows them on the last night that they're working at this pumpkin patch that they work at every year. And it's their senior year, so it's the last time that they'll be working here, and it just follows their shenanigans. And I really like this book. Give it four out of five stars. And again, I read it every year. Moving on to November, the first three books that I read in November were all part of the same series, and that was the Alex and Eliza series by Melissa De La Cruz. So Alex and Eliza, Love and War, and All for One. Um, I gave the first two books in the series 4 out of 5 stars, and I gave the third book 3 out of 5 stars. This obviously follows the story of Alexander Hamilton and Eliza Schuyler, and it is definitely uh, not the most realistic. Um, there's definitely some historical gaps, but I did really enjoy it overall. I thought that the writing was really nice, and I loved the historical aspects. Um, I think the second book is probably my favorite. I don't know. I like the first and second book pretty equally. Um, the first book kind of follows their courtship, so they're younger in the book, and it's dealing with, like, very, very young America, so I thought that was interesting. And then the second book, we kind of follow them as, you know, they've been married, and they move to New York City. And then the third book is actually, like, probably really boring, and it's, like, definitely my least favorite one in the series. Like, 2.75, 3 out of 5 stars is, like, probably my rating. And, yeah, it kind of was just, like, them in New York City and, like, dealing with, like, some things that happened in history, but it was really drugged out, and I didn't love it as much, but I do think that the series overall was interesting. I honestly don't think you even need to read the third book. Um, I think you could just read the first and second as a duology, and be really happy. So, yeah, um, I did enjoy this series overall. I thought it was a fun historical. I don't really read a lot of, like, historical fiction from, like, America. Like, that takes place in America, so it was interesting in that regard, and it was cute. So, I did really enjoy it. Next is another book that I read for school. This is actually one that I chose because we're basically doing an author study where we choose one author and read two of their books, and the one, the author I chose is Jane Austen, and the first book that I read from her was Sense and Sensibility. And um, I don't really know like what to say about this book because it's kind of difficult when I'm reading a book for school because I'm usually reading it more as a student than as a reader, but I did have all these tabs in it, which I think was cool. And basically my essay is going to be about how Jane Austen used illness and injury as a metaphor for how women were often beholden to men during this time. And I'm sure you guys know what Sense and Sensibility is about, so I'm not going to explain it. But I did really enjoy this book. I gave it four out of five stars. I really liked the characters, and I think that it's it was definitely a little bit more difficult to read than Pride and Prejudice, but I did like the book overall, and, you know, I really like Eleanor and Marianne, and I think that the plot, even though nothing really happens in the book, it was still pretty interesting to read, and I think that there's this book is definitely ripe 
for essay topics, and I might actually post my essay, like, on Goodreads or something once I write it, so I don't know, we will see, but definitely enjoyed it, 4 out of 5 stars, and it is absolutely a classic that I would recommend. Then I began my yearly reread of the Shatter Me series by Taha Mafi, so I got to book 3 in November, I'm gonna finish the series in December, but I read Shatter Me, uh, Destroy Me, Unravel Me, Fracture Me, and Ignite Me. Obviously the first book is Shatter Me, and I'm sure you know what the series is about, but if you don't, it follows Juliet, who is our main character, and in the beginning of the book we find out that she has been locked up in this asylum for almost a year, and it is because she has a lethal touch, and so this government group called the Reestablishment put her in this asylum to kind of keep her away from society, and the series obviously is much more than that, but um, this is kind of just how our first book begins, and I really do love this first book. Um, it's not my favorite in the series, and I think I used to rate it like five stars, but I definitely think it's a four star book, this first book, um, just because I think Tahana Mafi was definitely still finding her footing. Um, but even so, like, you probably could not tell that this is a debut book just because of how well written it is, and I still think it's just so genius that Tahana Mafi decided to write this book in this way where you kind of, the writing really changes a lot as Juliet grows and develops, and I just always thought that that was such an interesting part of this story, and I love returning to it every year, especially this first book. Um, it feels like coming home a lot of the time, and then um, I don't have, like, the bind-up of Destroy Me and Fracture Me, but it is, Destroy Me is in the back of this book, and I obviously really love Destroy Me. It's the novella that follows Warner's point of view in the time where he leaves in Shatter Me and returns in Unravel Me, and um, I really love that one as well, so I gave that four stars as well. And then we reach my favorite book in the series, Unravel Me. I love this book with all my heart. I think it is really a turning point of the series. We get so much development for all the characters. We, like, learn so much of the plot. This is definitely the most action-packed book in the series, and there's just so much going on. I mean, obviously, she thick. She's the longest one in the series, um, like, by a lot, and there's just so much happening in this book. So many developments. We get so many revelations, and Juliet grows so much. Like, the way that she starts this book and the way that she ends it is so, like, astounding that you could even get that much development in 461 pages, and especially just between books one and two, but oh my god, I love this book. It is just, it's perfection, and I love it, and it is just like the, I just like, I love this book. It's so good. I look forward to getting to this book, especially every single time. And then we obviously had Fracture Me in between, which is the novella from Adam's perspective. Originally I would always rate this book three stars, but I actually raised it to four stars just because I think I understood the merit of this story a lot more, and I think even though I don't love Adam, I was able to like read from his perspective with a new perspective, and I don't know. I just really liked this one a lot more, and I definitely gave it, I, I definitely happy I bumped up my rating, and it's obviously like a very crucial thing to read in this story, in this like series. And then we of course get to Ignite Me, which I also love. I also give this five out of five stars. Um, I know this is like everyone's favorite book in the series. I don't necessarily agree. I still love it, but it's not like my favorite. Obviously, we know Unravel Me is my favorite, but uh, I do really love this book, and I do think that it is like very, very close to perfect. Um, I think that uh, like the. Juliet in this book is probably one of my favorites. Um, and obviously she grows a lot during this book, and the way that she ends the series is just really great, and I don't think I ever read this book before Restore Me had come out. Um, definitely not before it had been announced, so I honestly like, can't imagine what reading this book as the final book in the series was like, just because I feel like it ends on a cliffhanger, like, to me. Maybe that's just because I obviously know Restore Me exists and everything, but yeah, it was interesting, and it's always interesting reaching that, like, last chapter. But, yeah, I obviously love this book. I think that the plot is perfect, and 
Um, the characters just grow so much in this book, and I love them all so much. Okay, I'm rushing because I have to go somewhere with my family, but the last book that I read was The Stranger by Albert Camus. I read this book with my class, and I didn't really love it that much. I gave it three stars. I thought the main character was really, really annoying. I did like the ending because I thought that it was, like, an interesting way to end the story, and I do think that the philosophy, the philosoph philosophical aspects of this book are interesting, but overall, I don't know. I don't know if it's, like, amazing, and I also think it's really ironic that this is a book that we read at school just because of the messaging of the story, that, like, nothing matters, and yet we analyze this book to death. So, yeah, I don't know, that's my thoughts on The Stranger, and... Yeah, those are my thoughts on the books I read in October and November. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you read any of the books that I read, that I read in these past two months, and I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know also what you read in October, November, um... And yeah, that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoy. All my social media links are in the description box below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!